Morrison's bakers, like Colin, begin their day very early. They're up before sunrise, so they can prepare fresh bread ready for customers as soon as the store opens. The baker's first task is to take a look at the stock sheet, which records what items sold in the bakery on this day last week. It helps the baker know how much of each item to bake. This means that the customers will have enough of what they want, and there will hopefully not be too much waste. Bread dough at the supermarket is made up of flour, yeast, water, and a special mix, which contains salt and extras to help the yeast work as well as possible. Just like when you're following a recipe at home or school, the correct proportions of each ingredient must be added. It's important to measure out the quantities carefully, so the dough will have the right texture or consistency. It's important that I keep the yeast and concentrate separate so that it doesn't slow the yeast down. This machine beats the mixture, turning it into a thick dough. It should be mixed until it looks elastic and pulls away from the side of the bowl. This is to develop the gluten, which is the stringy strands of protein that give bread its structure and texture. As you or your mixing machine work the dough, these strands of gluten get stronger, longer and more elastic. Now comes the all-important kneading of the dough. This is an essential step if the bread is to turn out right. Here at the supermarket, there are machines to do the kneading, but at home or at school, you'll probably have to knead your dough by hand. You may get tired, but it's important to keep going. You have to knead the dough for long enough, which can be 10 to 12 minutes. So that's perfect. Slightly tacky to the touch and nice and smooth. If the gluten is developed well enough, it will be able to stretch into a window pane effect so that you can see through it, like so. If your test shows that the dough is ready, it should be left to rest a little before it is shaped. Today I'm going to make some plaited bread and some cobs. Basic bread dough can be shaped into all sorts of different loaves or into baps. This is where the baker's skills come into play. I'm now going to finish these by lightly spraying with water and just dipping them in my poppy seeds and then evenly spacing them on the tray so they have time to prove. Before baking, the dough needs to be proved. That means left in a warm, humid place to expand and rise. At the bakery, the dough is transferred to a proving oven. At home or school, you can cover your dough with a clean, damp tea towel and leave it somewhere warm to prove. Remember that yeast was one of the ingredients in bread? Well, yeast is alive. It's a very helpful microorganism. As the dough is left to rest after kneading and shaping, the yeast gets to work. It feeds on the sugars in the flour, and as it does, it gives off a gas, carbon dioxide. It's this gas which turns a dense mass of dough into a well-risen loaf. This should now take 24 minutes to bake, and they should be a lovely golden colour. Our plaited loaf, finished with seeds, you can see it's nicely baked all the way round. There's a lovely Coburg cob. You can always test if it's baked correctly by tapping on the bottom. It should sound hollow. Bread is cooled on racks before being wrapped and maybe even sliced for customers. Baking carries on throughout the day so that there is a constant supply of fresh bread. Being a baker like Colin requires patience and skill. It is quite a craft, and with over 40 types of bread sold in store, there's a lot to learn and a lot to enjoy.